Hello and welcome to Math Zone African Motives. In this tutorial, we will be working through a heat question from a past exam paper. Our goal is to solve each problem systematically, page by page, and ensure our answers are correct. By the end of this video, you will be able to state basic gas processes, name a specific process based on temperature, and apply formulas for linear, area, and volume expansion to solve practical problems. So let's get started with our first question. Question 7.1 asks, state any three basic gas processes. This is a theoretical question worth three marks, meaning we need to provide three distinct processes to get full credit. In thermodynamics, a gas process describes how a gas changes its state. These changes are characterized by how physical properties like pressure, volume, and temperature behave. Let's recall the three most common and fundamental processes. The first process is one where the volume of the gas is kept constant. This is known as an isochoric process. Here, the volume remains the same while the pressure and temperature are allowed to change. The second process involves keeping the pressure constant. This is called an isobaric process. During an isobaric change, the pressure is held steady and the volume and temperature can vary. Finally, the third basic process is one where the temperature is maintained at a constant value. We refer to this as an isothermal process. In an isothermal process, the temperature does not change, but the pressure and volume can. So, to recap, the three basic gas processes are isochoric, where volume is constant, isobaric, where pressure is constant, and isothermal, where temperature is constant. Providing any three of these will earn you the full three marks. Now let's look at question 7.2, which is worth one mark. It asks, Name a gas process whereby the initial and final temperature are both at constant. This question is a direct follow-up to our previous discussion. We just learned about three fundamental gas processes. Let's think about them again. Isochoric, isobaric, and isothermal. The question specifically mentions a process where the temperature is constant. This means the temperature at the beginning of the process is the same as the temperature at the end. Looking at our list, the process that keeps the temperature constant is the isothermal process. So this is our answer. An isothermal process is defined by having a constant temperature throughout. It's the perfect description for a situation where the initial and final temperatures are the same. Therefore, an isothermal process is the correct answer. Now we move on to question 7.3 a multi-part calculation problem involving thermal expansion. Let's first read the entire problem statement. The problem asks us to calculate three things based on this information. Before we start calculating, it's always a good idea to extract and list all the given data. We have the initial length L0, which is 75 centimeters. The initial width is 35 centimeters, and the initial height is 20 centimeters. The initial temperature T1 is 38 degrees Celsius, and the final temperature T2 is 400 degrees Celsius. The coefficient of linear expansion, alpha, is 17 times 10 to the power of negative 6 per degree Celsius. Now that we have our data, let's look at the first part of the question. Subquestion 7.3.1 asks for the expansion in the length of the plate in centimeters. This is a question about linear expansion. First, Let's write down the formula for linear expansion. The change in length, denoted delta L, is equal to the original length L naught, multiplied by the coefficient of linear expansion alpha, multiplied by the change in temperature, which is T2 minus T1. This formula tells us how much a material will expand in one dimension when heated. Now let's identify the values we need from our given data. The original length, L naught, is 75 centimeters, the coefficient of linear expansion, alpha, is 17 times 10 to the power of negative 6 per degree Celsius. The final temperature, T2, is 400 degrees Celsius, and the initial temperature, T1, is 38 degrees Celsius. Let's substitute these values into our formula and calculate the expansion. Delta L equals 75, multiplied by 17 times 10 to the negative 6, multiplied by the quantity 400 minus 38. First, we calculate the change in temperature. 400 minus 38 is 362, so we have 75 times 17 times 10 to the negative 6 times 3 on 62. 
Performing this multiplication, we get 0.46155. The question asks for the expansion to be in centimeters, and our calculation gives us centimeters. We also need to round our answer to three decimal places, as per the instructions. Rounding 0.46155 to three decimal places, we get 0462 centimeters. So, the length of the plate expands by 0.462 centimeters. This matches the provided memo. Next, in sub-question 7.3.2, we need to calculate the area in square millimeters of the 75 centimeter by 35 centimeter side at the final temperature of 400 degrees Celsius. The memo uses a formula for the increase in area, delta A, rather than directly calculating the final area. Let's write that formula down. The formula for the increase in area is the original area A0, multiplied by 2 times the coefficient of linear expansion alpha, multiplied by the change in temperature T2 minus T1. Notice the factor of 2, because area is a two-dimensional quantity. First, we need to find the original area of the 75 cm by 35 cm side and convert it to square millimeters. The original area A0 is 75 cm times 35 cm, which equals 2625 square centimeters. Now, let's convert this to square millimeters. We know 1 cm equals 10 millimeters. So, 1 square centimeter is 10 millimeters times 10 millimeters, which is 100 square millimeters. To convert 2625 square centimeters, we multiply by 100, which gives us 262,500 square millimeters. The memo seems to have approached this differently by first converting the dimensions to millimeters and then calculating the area. Let's follow that approach to see if it makes a difference. The length L0 is 75 centimeters, which is 750 millimeters. The width N0 is 35 centimeters, which is 350 millimeters. The initial area is then 750 millimeters times 350 millimeters, which gives 262,500 square millimeters. As you can see, both methods give the same correct original area in square millimeters. Now, let's calculate the increase in area. Delta A equals 262 to 500, multiplied by 2 times 17 times 10 to the negative 6, multiplied by 362. This calculates to an increase in area of 323.01 square millimeters. The question asks for the area at the final temperature, not just the key, increase in area. To find the final area, we add the increase to the original area. The final area AF is a naught plus delta A. That's 262,500 plus 323.01, which gives 262,823.01 square millimeters. Let's round this to three decimal places. The final answer is 262,823.010 square millimeters. The memo provided an answer of 265,730 baths and 85 square millimeters. It seems the memo's calculation is incorrect. Our calculation is step by step and follows the correct formula for area expansion. Subquestion 7.3.3 asks for the increase in volume of the plate in cubic meters. This is a question about volume expansion. Again, let's start with the formula for the increase in volume. The change in volume, delta 5, is equal to the original volume V0, multiplied by 3 times the coefficient of linear expansion alpha, multiplied by the change in temperature T2 minus T1. We have a factor of 3 because volume is 3-dimensional. First, we need to calculate the original volume V0. The original volume is the initial length times the initial width times the initial height. That's 75 centimeters times 35 centimeters times 20 centimeters, which gives 52 to 500 cubic centimeters. Now, we must convert this volume to cubic meters, as required by the question. We know that one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. Therefore, one cubic meter is 100 cubed, or one million cubic centimeters. To convert from cubic centimeters to cubic meters, we must divide by one million. So 52,500 divided by 1,000,000 gives us 0.0525 cubic meters. Now we have all the values we need to calculate the increase in volume in cubic meters. Delta 5 equals 0 0.0525, multiplied by 3 times 17 times 10 to the negative 6, multiplied by 362. This calculation gives us approximately 0.0969 cubic meters. 
We need to express this in the requested format, which is in terms of scientific notation. To do that, we move the decimal point three places to the right, which gives us 0 0.969 times 10 to the power of negative three cubic meters. This matches the answer in the memo. We've reached our final question, 7.4. It states, the volume of a nitrogen gas is 0 0.495 cubic meters at 75 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 750 kilopascals. Determine the thermodynamic temperature of the gas if the volume is 0 by 0639 cubic meters at a pressure of 1000 kilopascals. This problem describes a change of state for a gas involving pressure, volume, and temperature. The relationship between these variables for an ideal gas is given by the combined gas law. The formula for the combined gas law is P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. The key thing to remember is that temperature, T, must be expressed in a thermodynamic scale, which means Kelvin, not Celsius. Now let's list our initial and final states from the problem. For the initial state, state 1, the pressure P1 is 750 kilopascals, the volume V1 is 0 0.495 cubic meters, and the temperature is T1. For the final state, state 2, the pressure P2 is 1,000 kilopascals, the volume V2 is 0 0.0639 cubic meters, and we are asked to find the final thermodynamic temperature, T2. The problem states that the initial temperature is 75 degrees Celsius. Before we can use the combined gas law, we must convert this to Kelvin. The conversion from Celsius to Kelvin is to add 273.155, so T1 equals 75 plus 273.55, which is 348.15. Kelvin. The memo used 348 Kelvin, so we will proceed with that for consistency, but note that 348.15 is more precise. The memo also lists a value for P2 as 1300 kilopascals, but the question clearly states P2 is 1000 kilopascals. We will use the value from the question, which is 1000 kPa. The question gives us these values. The memo uses different values. We must always follow the question. So our state 2 will use P2 equals 1000 kilopascals and V2 equals 0 P.0639 cubic meters. Now we rearrange the combined gas law formula to solve for T2, multiplying both sides by T1 and T2 and dividing by P2 V2, we get T2 equals P2 V2 T1, all divided by P1 V1. Let's substitute our correct values into this equation. T2 equals 1,000 times 0 0.0639 times 348 divided by 750 times 0 0.495. This calculates to approximately 59.88899 Kelvin. Rounding to three decimal places, the thermodynamic temperature is 59.890 Kelvin. The memo gives an answer of 59.89 degrees Kelvin, which is the same value, but arrived at using incorrect input values for P2 and V2. Our calculation using the correct values from the question provides the verified answer. So, the final temperature of the gas is 59 baton 890 Kelvin. And that concludes our walkthrough of this heat question. We started by identifying three basic gas processes and the specific process for constant temperature. Then we tackled thermal expansion, learning the formulas and applying them to calculate linear expansion, area expansion, and volume expansion for a copper plate. We were careful with unit conversions and identified a discrepancy in the provided memo's area calculation. Finally, we used the combined gas law to find the final temperature of a gas, emphasizing the critical step of converting temperature to Kelvin. We also corrected for incorrect values in the memo. We hope this step-by-step -step tutorial was helpful. Remember paying close attention to the question, using the correct formulas, converting units, and performing careful calculations are key to success in physics problems. Thank you for watching. For more tutorials from MathZone African Motives, make sure to subscribe to our channel.